Hey, Quinn. It's been a long time. It's me, Nina. Your sister? Remember me? I'm sorry. Who are you? I'm afraid I don't know anyone by that name. Goodbye. Wait. Just hold on a second. What are you talking about? Don't tell me you don't remember your little sister. Did you really manage to forget me in just eight years? Yes, that's definitely it. I most definitely have forgotten. I have absolutely no recollection of a woman who does things like stealing someone else's boyfriend. I'm afraid I don't have a sister, so you must be talking to the wrong person. What? Are you still angry about that? You know, it doesn't look good for you if you just hang on to every little gripe from high school. It certainly doesn't make you look like a good catch to guys. That's probably why they fell all head over heels for me instead, you know? So is there any actual reason for you reaching out to me? Or are you just trying to start something? I'm pretty sure I remember telling you to never contact me unless there's a serious emergency, didn't I? Frankly, I wanted to cut all ties with you, but if I did that, then I'd also end up losing contact with mom, too. Something like, if you cut ties with your sister, you cut ties with me, if I remember correctly. I can't say I ever understood it. So while it was something I absolutely loathed to do, I kept a line between us open, but only not to lose mom. You haven't forgotten that, have you? If you're only reaching out to me to start a fight over some trivial matter, I'll just block you entirely. Well, I see you're as cold as always. Oh, well, whatever. Anyway, I did actually reach out to you for a reason. Two, actually. There's something important I need to tell you about, and I have a request for you too. Something important and a request? What could you possibly want from me? That's right. So, well, the thing is, I have some big news to share with you. I am going to be getting married. Oh, congratulations, I guess. Who is the lucky guy? And that's not all. I'm already pregnant with his child, too. We're getting married quickly, so the whole situation doesn't turn scandalous. Isn't that just exciting? Yes, sure. Whatever you say. Is that the important thing you wanted to tell me? If so, then I'll just be going. I have better things to do than to listen to your bragging. Ugh, I swear. You're always like this. Why do you always have to try to end the conversation as soon as possible? Don't you want to catch up with your sister? Don't you want to know more about my life? No, not really. You're not my sister. You're just someone who shares some of my DNA. And I don't care about your life. You've made it clear that you don't care about mine. Well, that's too bad. Because I haven't even gotten to telling you my request yet. And trust me, you're going to want to hear this. Then could you hurry up and tell me already? I have a number of better things to do than just listening to you babble on. So, yeah, well, here's what's going to happen. I'll be getting married once I have the kids, so... That's why I wanted to ask you to divorce your husband, okay? You can handle that, right? I'm sorry, what? You want me to divorce my husband? Why? What does that have to do with anything? Well, duh! If you don't divorce him, I can't exactly get married now, can I? That would be illegal and immoral. That's why I'm asking you to divorce him. You're not making any sense. Have you completely lost it? Though, before you answer that, there's something else I'd like to know first. How did you even know I was married to begin with? Obviously, I haven't told you, and I didn't speak to mom about it either. Well, I heard it from the guy I'm going to be marrying soon. He told me everything. He told me how you kept your whole relationship and your marriage a secret from not just me, but from everybody. You know, Dad was super angry when he heard about it. Well, of course. There's no way I would ever introduce him to any of you. When my family includes a woman who steals boyfriends, and that woman happens to be Daddy's little girl that he'll protect no matter what she does, there's no way I would take that kind of risk. It did hurt not to tell Mom, though, since she seems to be the only one in the family on my side. But I knew that if I told her, she'd just tell you and the situation would spiral into a huge problem. So I just kept quiet. But whatever. Despite all that, you somehow seem to find out at this point. That's all irrelevant. Who is this guy you're going to be marrying anyway? I certainly hadn't told anyone. But my closest friends and my husband's parents are the only ones that would know as far as I understand. Oh, what's this now? Are you curious? Does it bother you? I wonder if I should tell you. Maybe it would be better if I kept it as a little surprise. Look... I don't know what games you're trying to play with me, but I'm not about to just sit around and wait for you to decide whether to actually tell me or not. If you intend to tell me at all, just hurry it up and say who it is already. Oh, boo. You're just no fun at all, you know that? 
Considering what your definition of fun is, I'll take that as a compliment. Fine, fine. I'll tell you. I'll be marrying Theodore. What? Theodore? Yep, that's right. That adorable hunk, Theodore. You know him quite well, don't you? I mean, I can't imagine you don't, since he's your husband and everything. Excuse me, did you just say Theodore? That's right. I'm pregnant with your husband's child. Oops, I did it again. <laughs> I guess I just stole another man from you, didn't I? Silly me. Wait, hold on a second. What are you talking about? You're going to marry Theodore? Is this meant to be some kind of joke? Oh, I understand why you might not want to believe me. Really, I do. But everything I've said up until now is the truth. Shouldn't it be obvious who I heard about your marriage from now? I heard everything from Theodore. He told me how you met in college, how he fell in love with you, how he proposed to you, and how he secretly married you without telling anyone. He also told me how he regretted it all. Just wait. I'm trying to process all of this. Why have you been doing things with Theodore of all people? How did you even end up meeting him? Oh, that's easy. He's a co-worker at this new job I just got. He's the manager of the marketing department, and I'm his assistant. He's so smart and handsome and charming. I couldn't help but fall for him. And he felt the same way about me. He told me how unhappy he was with you, how you were cold and distant and boring, and how he wanted to be with me instead. So that's what's going on, huh? Yep, that's exactly what's been happening. So I'm going to ask you again. Please hurry up and break up with Theodore, okay? After all, I'm going to be marrying him by the time I have this baby. Well, here's the thing. You might be asking me to divorce him like it's no big deal, but... Well, that might prove to be a bit difficult. Oh, what are you talking about? What's there for you to be so troubled about? You haven't had any kids, and from what I heard, you're not even living together. How can you even call that married? You could just file some divorce papers and we'd be over in a snap. That's not that hard, is it? I mean, yes, theoretically speaking, it would be pretty simple to just file some papers and end the marriage like that. That's not the problem I'm talking about, though. Look, I don't care what boring issues you have. Just divorce him already. I'll even pay you to do it. You're willing to pay me? Are you serious? You're willingly offering money for me to separate from Theodore? Yes. Can't you read? I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't like the idea of paying you anything at all. I absolutely loathe the idea of doing so. But Theodore was telling me that it was important that we get our marriage official before the baby is born. That's all. He said something about the child being illegitimate or something. He used some big word I don't understand. Ah, an illegitimate love child, huh? Okay, so? Well, when he told me that, I did all sorts of research online. When a divorce happens, one of the biggest things that couples fight over is money. So I thought that if I could pay you enough for you to divorce him without any extra complaining, then we could avoid any unnecessary drama and complication. I figured you could just give up on him entirely and just move on without making a fuss, you know? Make things easier for everyone. So how about it? Why don't you just divorce him? The sooner the better. I'll pay whatever amount of money you want. Ah, I see. I think I understand how you and Theodore are thinking well enough. Okay, sure. I'll agree to your request. Really? Thank you so much, Quinn. You're such a sweetheart. So how much money do you need? Just give me a number, and I'll get it wired to you as soon as possible. Okay, zero. Zero? Are you saying you want nothing? That's right. I don't need you to pay me. You can just forget about that part. What? Really? You're not joking? No, I'm not joking. I don't want your money. It would make me sick to take anything from you. But why? Don't you want some compensation for giving up your husband? No, I don't. He's not worth anything to me anymore. But still, you're doing me a huge favor by divorcing him. You're making it possible for me to marry him and have his baby. Honestly, it would feel worse to actually have to accept anything from you, money or otherwise. So I'd prefer you don't pay me. For all I know, you or someone else might try to claim that I'm just a woman who tries to forcibly get money from her younger sister. I'd prefer to just be as separate from this as possible. Why don't you take the money you were thinking of paying me and save it for your child instead? Are you serious? You're really okay with it? Thank you! You're so generous and kind. Even after I stole your husband's affection, you aren't even asking me for money to give him up. You really are the best. Quinn, I love you. Yeah, I hate you. Whatever. Anyway, goodbye. Wait, don't hang up yet. There's one more thing. What is it now? Well, I was wondering if you could do one more thing for me. What? Another thing? What more do you want from me? 
Well, it's not a big deal, really. It's just that I want you to be my maid of honor at the wedding. What? Are you insane? That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. No, please, listen to me. It would mean so much to me if you could be there for me on my special day. You're my sister after all. Oh, Quinn, I just gave birth this morning. He's a happy and healthy baby boy. I'm pretty sure I told you this when you got married. I don't need you to be contacting me to report things like this. I couldn't care less about what's going on in your personal life. Nothing else matters less to me. Right now, I don't care what sort of mean things you say to me. It doesn't matter. Right now, I'm the happiest woman in the world. Yes, yes. Glad to hear it. Whatever. Oh, I'm so sorry, Quinn. I guess if things had gone differently, you might have been the one holding this little bundle of joy, wouldn't you? Oh, I'm sorry. This must be making you so sad, huh? Considering I stole your husband from you and all, I really did just rob you of all your happiness, didn't I? Huh? Oh, no. I haven't been robbed of anything. I'm perfectly happy with how things are right now. You know, you don't have to put on such a brave face for me, right? Behind that attitude of yours, it's actually really frustrating, isn't it? It's painful, isn't it? To not only have your boyfriend stolen from you, but to have that even happen to your husband, too. I bet you're thinking, I can't believe Nina beat me again. She even stole the child I deserve from me, right? No, I'm not putting on anything. I really am fine with how things are. After all, I've got my husband and children sitting right here next to me. What's there to be sad about? What? Oh, sorry. I always forget that you're a bit slow. So let me reiterate, in case you didn't know, that means say again for you. My actual husband and my adorable children are both right here next to me. So I'm perfectly happy with how things are. Your actual husband and not a child, but children? What are you talking about? Are you telling me you remarried or something? Do you really think I could go as far as to get married again in this short of a time frame? Let alone have more than one child? Look, I think you've been running under a mistaken assumption this whole time. So let me explain things to you. I have never once said that Theodore is my husband. Theodore and I have also never been married. Huh? What do you mean? It's been five years since I got married and I have two children of my own already. Obviously, my husband is someone different. As for Theodore, he's just an ex-boyfriend I dated for two months in college, nothing more. During that time, he was super controlling and destroyed both my phone and my apartment door. There was even one time he tried to tie me to a chair. Obviously, I split up with him because of that crazy behavior. I heard he got dragged away to the middle of nowhere before graduation, too. He's been acting like a stalker ever since, trying to find me and send creepy messages and whatnot, but I haven't actually met him in person for years. Huh? Wait, what are you saying? Tie you to a chair? He destroyed your phone and your apartment? Dragged to the middle of nowhere acting like a stalker? What do you mean by all this? Oh, you mean you just up and married him without knowing anything about him? When I was in college, Theodore was constantly asking me to go out with him. So I humored him for a while. While we dated, he tried to stop me from talking to any other men. He'd even go as far as to take my phone and delete their numbers and messages of my male classmates. When spring break came around, he came by with a rope and said that I wasn't allowed to go out because I might be seduced by someone else. He was going to try to use that rope to keep me literally tied up in my apartment to make sure I couldn't leave. So I broke up with him then and there, and the threat of a restraining order got him to stop trying to force the issue. That didn't stop him from snatching my phone from me and crushing it with his foot, though. That's completely insane. Yeah. I realized he was a guy I wanted nothing to do with, but I had the dumb idea that he'd just give up after I told him I wanted to break up. That's when he started coming to my door at all hours of the day. He pounded on the door, yelled at the top of his lungs for me to come out, stuff like that. When none of that worked, after a day or two, one day he literally kicked my door down. What? He did that? He started barking orders at me like how I had to quit school and move in with his parents or I should start practicing homemaking or some crazy stuff like that. He really did try to drag me away to his family's house someplace out in the middle of nowhere. That's when I called the police and he was taken away in handcuffs. While I managed to avoid being basically abducted, I kept an eye out all the same. Once he was released from police custody, he started stalking me. Even when I ran to another state, he still followed me. Frankly, it was terrifying. 
I got a restraining order against him, but that didn't change his behavior. That's so scary. Are you telling me... Are you telling me that when Theodore told me you were his wife, he was lying? You're saying I just had the kid of a man who wasn't your husband? Well, it's not exactly normal for a woman to have the baby of her sister's husband. But to put it simply, yeah, Theodore was lying. I imagine that when he heard that you were my sister, he thought he could use you as a way to get back to me. So I think he lied and said that he was my husband as a way to get you interested in him. And things went from there. I can't say for sure whether or not he was intending to get you as his wife or not, as you're just my sister and not me. This is a joke, right? This is just some sick joke. It has to be. Did Theodore really trick me? It sounds to me that you just didn't realize the true nature of the man you were hoping you were stealing from me. Making you marry him, impregnating you so you'd have his kid, and make it next to impossible to escape him. Huh? It sounds to me like you're going to end up being taken to his family's house. And from what I understand, it really is out in the boondocks where you'll get no cell reception. I don't even know if they'll have internet access. With how Theodore is, I imagine his family probably isn't very different. I think you have a good reason to be worried. It sounds like you've got an interesting life ahead of you. Wait, just hold on. You're not serious, right? This guy isn't really that crazy, is he? You're just trying to scare me, right? Well, whether you believe me or not is up to you. But you have to have had at least figured it out by now, right? Why I didn't want you to pay me for separating from Theodore? That's because Theodore was never my husband to begin with. I haven't seen him in years, like I said. There was no reason for me to accept any money from you in the first place. You're so cruel! Why would you not even speak up about something like that? Hey, you're the one who said you didn't care about what difficulties there were. You just forged ahead based on your own mistaken assumption. You can't put the blame on anyone else but yourself. Frankly, I'm surprised you weren't suspicious. Did you really think I wouldn't react more angrily to hearing that you slept with my husband? Oh, shut up. Now's not the time to be saying things like that to me. Just what's going to happen to me now? What should I do? What can I do? Don't you understand how serious this is? I'm married. This guy? I've got a child now. I had no idea that Theodore was such a crazy person. Come on, Quinn. You've got to help me. I don't want to go living out in some old-fashioned town out in the sticks. Look, I don't know what you're expecting me to do. Even if I actually wanted to do anything to help, there wouldn't be much I could do. You're the one who happily chose to marry the guy, remember? But he told me he was your husband. I thought that no matter who it was, as long as he was your husband, I could make it work. I had no idea about any of this. I was tricked. Wow, you really are just a total idiot, huh? No wonder he managed to take advantage of you so easily. You were so fixated on just trying to steal my husband that you didn't even bother to check if he was even telling the truth. The moment you heard that he and I were married, you just took him at his word because that way you could try to take him from me. You fell for his act hook, line, and sinker because you were fixated on hurting me whenever you had the chance to, instead of paying attention to who he was. If you're going to blame anyone for your current predicament, blame yourself. No, no, no. You're wrong. Come on, Quinn. I don't want this. Please save me. I refuse. You made this bed, you lie in it. Well, I guess you've laid in it already, haven't you? Anyway, this is goodbye. Have a happy life. I learned that Nina and her new son were discharged from the hospital without any health issues. However, as soon as they left the hospital, Nina's life turned into a nightmare. Theodore revealed his true colors and forced her to quit her job and move to his family's house in the countryside. There, Nina's new parents-in-law took over the custody of the boy and treated her like their personal servant. They were just as controlling and abusive as Theodore. When dad heard about this, he was furious. He drove all the way to their house and barged in to rescue his favorite daughter. He confronted Theodore and his parents and demanded that they let Nina and the boy go. However, they refused to listen and a violent fight broke out. I'm pretty sure this will end up in a divorce, but it could also drag on for a long time, especially since Nina has no money or legal support. She only knows how to seduce men and cause trouble. I'm not surprised that her marriage turned out like this. I decided to delete Nina's contact info from my phone and block her number. I didn't want to hear from her ever again. She had caused me enough pain and trouble. 
I also decided to cut off all ties with dad. He had always favored Nina over me and ignored my feelings. He had never been a good father to me. Meanwhile, mom had enough of dad and Nina's drama. She decided to file for divorce herself and leave them behind. I was relieved to hear that she finally stood up for herself and chose to live her own life. I was happy for her, but also sad that our family had fallen apart. Now that she's distanced herself from the rest of the family, I'm starting to make plans to see her again so she can finally meet her grandchildren face to face.